Okie dokie. We are on question 11. This is the last question. Focuses on probability. And this actually, I must be honest, probability is my favorite section. But let's just jump in and get going. It says 10 coins are arranged in a row. So we have 10 coins. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay? 5 are 1 rands. 3 are 2 rands. 2 are 5 rand coins. How many different arrangements are possible? Knowing that all the coins are the same. Uh, knowing all the coins of the same value are identical. So he's saying there's nothing different between the one rand here and the one rand there. They're identical. So remember here, we have 10 different coins that can go in this play, into this position. 9, 8, 7, the whole way down to 1. Okay, because once we put a coin there, we can't then put it over there. We've just taken a coin out of the 10 and we only have 9 left. Okay, so there's a way of writing that, right? You can say 10 times 9 times the whole way times 1. Or you can just write 10 factorial okay so that is the ways but now we know that the one rands are identical the twos are identical and the fives are identical we have to take that into account so we say 10 factorial if nothing was identical nothing was identical but now we have to strip out the combinations where the five three uh, where the five two and one rands are sitting in the same place but we are basically saying those are different combinations where they're not Right, so we have to strip out. Um, we have to say five factorial down here, two factorial, and three factorial. So I'm saying I want to strip out all of the events from here where the one rands are sitting in the same place, but I'm saying they're different one rands because they're different coins. They're not, they're identical. So I'm stripping out all the ones there. Then here, I'm stripping out all the fives. Okay, because there's two five round coins. So I'm taking out those outcomes where the fives are in the same place, but I'm just swapping those two coins, right? I'm saying, okay, the five is first and last. Okay, and now I'm just going to swap them. But it's not a different combination because we said that those fives are identical, okay? And then I say three factorial for the two rounds, okay? And that'll be my answer. We can put that into our calculator. I just want to show you how to do factorial on your calculator. Hopefully I can remember. Otherwise, that'll be a bit embarrassing in the hood. Okay. Oh, there we go. Ah, oh, there we go. Okay. Two times five factorial times three factorial. Oh, no. Goodness. What am I doing? Factorial. So it is 2,520 different arrangements. Okay. Cool. So that's the first question. Again, it's it's a, a fairly standard question for um, probability, but it, it really tests very key understanding. Okay. Then let's go into the next question. It says, the trees in an orange orchard are harvested twice a year. So there's twice. During the first harvest, 70% of the oranges are picked. Okay. And the rest are left. At the second harvest, 35% of the remaining oranges. So this is basically... 35% of, oh goodness, that looks like 8, of 30%. Because there was 30% left over from the first harvest, and then 35% of that 30% are picked while the rest are not picked. Okay, so it says, assume no oranges were added between the harvests. So it's basically saying, it's 70% at the first harvest, and there's still 30% left at the second harvest. It's not like you added any more, or you took any away, it's still 30%. Then it says, Calculate the probability that a randomly selected orange will not be picked, okay? So that orange will just be able to stay in the orchard. So probability not picked. Okay, so we're going to say the probability of not being picked at all is the, pro is the probability of not picked at the first harvest times the probability of not picked, right, at the second harvest. Okay, so the probability of not being picked at the first harvest is going to be 1 minus 0 0.7. Okay, because we know that 0 0.7, is, which is 70%, is the probability of being picked. So the orange is either picked or it's not picked. So I'm saying 1 minus the probability of being picked times by. So it says the probability of not being picked at the second Right, at the second harvest. So I'm going to say at the second harvest, the probability of not being picked is 1 minus 0 0.35. Right, because the probability of being picked at the first harvest is 70%. The probability of being picked at the second harvest is 35%. Okay, and this is the way I want us to think about it. Okay, so I'm going to say 
1 minus 0 0.7 times by 1 minus 0 0.35. So the probability of not being picked is 0 0.195, okay, or which is equivalent to 19.5%, okay? So the probability that an orange will not be picked is 19.5%. Okay, so I hope you follow that logic. Probability can be tricky at times, but the best thing with probability is to try actually see the situation. And you, I might be, you might be like, oh, I can't really see like an, an orchard of oranges. But like, try think about it in very practical terms, right? Because this is quite a practical way of actually applying mathematics, okay? So I hope that makes sense. Let's now continue. I think we have two more questions. Fabulous. Um, and they get a little bit more tricky, but that's okay we will approach them in the same fashion. It says, if it is further given that all the oranges that are picked are packed with 9% selected for export, 31% sold to the local market, and the rest, right? So the rest is 60%, right? Because you have it has to add up to 100% because it's saying there's 100% of oranges that are picked, right? That's our sample size. 9% go off to export, 31% go to local market, and 60% go off to making some lovely juice, okay? So then it says, what percentage of oranges will be sent to the factory to be made into juice, okay? So we're going to say probability or, um, yeah, probability of becoming a juice, okay? So then we need to say probability of, becoming a juice from the first harvest, right? Plus the probability of becoming a juice at the second harvest, okay? Now, this is quite important. Now, you could be saying, why do these things, why is there a plus here and not a, a multiplication, right? Why is there a plus here and not a multiplication, okay? So what we need to think about is here, when we're doing multiplication, it says, what is the probability that a randomly selected orange will not be picked? So it was saying that orange goes through both of those harvests, right? What's the probability it goes through both of those harvests? So it happens, it's an and, it's an and event, right? So it's not picked at the first one and it's not picked at the second one, okay? It's and, it's an and event. And when it's an and event, we always times, okay? But when it is an event like this, where it says, what percentage of oranges will be sent to the factory to be made into juice, right? It's saying, what is the probability of becoming a juice in the first harvest or becoming a juice in the second harvest? What are those two probabilities? It's an or event, okay? So let's now do this. And when it's an or event, we use plus, right? So or you should be thinking plus and you should be thinking multiplication. Okay, so it's important to understand these because it's saying what percentage of oranges will be sent to the factory. So we're basically saying what is the probability of becoming a juice in the first one or becoming a juice in the second one? Okay, so the probability of becoming a juice in the first one, we say 0 0.7 because that's the number of oranges in the first one, times 0 0.6. Okay, because 60% of the 70% become juice. Okay, second harvest. How many oranges do we have? We only have 0 0.3 left, right? And then we know that only 35% of them get harvested, right? That's what we knew from the question. And then 60% of that will then be made into juice. Okay, so what we do here, we hoi this in our calculator and we should get an answer. Okay, and I'm getting 0 0.483 which is, and they've asked specifically for percentage here, so write in the format they want, right? 48.3%, right? 48.3% of oranges will be made into juice, right? So it's a probability of being a juice in the first one plus the probability of being a juice in the second one, okay? That's very important, right? So there'll be some oranges that'll be in the first harvest, some will be in the second, some will not be harvested, right? But what we have accounted for here is we're saying, those that were harvested, how many of them were juiced? Okay, that's important. Let's now move on to the very last question of this paper. It says there are 120 oranges in an export box, okay? Remember how many were exported? 9%, okay? If 172 boxes are exported, then how many oranges were there in the total crop? So they're basically saying, if you can work out how many are exported, right, and that's a certain percentage of the total harvest, then work out how many oranges there were in total. Okay, so let's start with working out this harvested percentage, 
right? So we want to say, okay, well, how many were exported? Okay, so it was 172 boxes and each of them had 120 oranges. Okay, 20640. So that's how many were exported, right? Put that there, exported. Okay, but we know that the export percentage, right? So the export percentage was 9%. Okay, so we want to say, okay, the probability of being exported, right? We basically are redoing this question, but now instead of juicing, you are exporting. So probability of exporting would be 0.7. For the first um, harvest, times 0 0.09. For the second harvest, it will be 0 0.3 times 0 0.35 times 0 0.09. Okay, exactly what we did above, except here, it is specifically, specifically, not specifically, um, for the export. Okay, so it's all, again, as I said before in other videos, it leverage, these, these questions leverage off each other. Okay, so it's important that we understand. Did I do that correctly? Um, oh, no, I didn't put a plus in here. Just making up my own sums up in here. Okay, so it's 0 0.07245, which is equivalent to 7.245%. Okay, so that's the percent that was harvested. Was harvested and exported. Right, so that's a percent of the total of the total um, number of oranges that were exported. Okay, total percentage of um, oranges that were exported, and we know that that equals two o six four zero. Okay, so this is basically saying the two o six four zero accounts for seven point two four five percent of the total harvest. So let's figure out what the total harvest is then. Okay, so what we do is we say, okay, what we're going to do is we're going to take this amount, 20640, we're going to divide it by this 245, okay, oh, that's a percent, sorry. Okay, we're going to just divide that, right? And then we get how many is in 100%. Now, you could be thinking, why on earth do I do that? I just want to show you it as a ratio, okay? So then we want to say this gets to 100%, and then how many oranges is there? That's effectively what we've done. So what you can say is you can say, okay, what do I have to do 7.245 to get to 100? All right, and you basically go like this, okay? I have to multiply it by 13.8 to get to 100%. Now remember with the ratio, what I do to the one side, I do to the other side. So you just take this 13.8 um, number, this factor that we've we, that we've just um, calculated, and you times it by the number of oranges that are representative of 7.245%. And you'll see there that the question mark equals 284886, right? Oranges in total. Okay. So this is a bit of a, it's, I mean, it's like a multi-layered question, but I hope that was helpful for you right? Um, these questions can be difficult. Go over it again. Most important thing with probability is always to remember the and and the ors, right? Um, and to think about it in as practical terms as you can. Okay, that's us finished, guys. Good job.